Hey, this is Mark and Jenny Dream Team. She's the dream and I'm the team. Um, so hey, we were just, I'm sure there's gonna be thousands of people joining us any moment now. But uh, I had um, just like a week or so ago, talked to Jenny about what um, she thought about doing like a video with me, like maybe YouTube or even Facebook Live. And then so, hello people, we see you coming on. John and Henry Adekarano and Jenny McGuffey Crawford. Um, but, uh, and then I missed you today. I was like, hey, you wanna do Facebook Live? Like, Facebook Live. But, uh, so that's what we're doing. And um, in the last few years, we've kinda had, especially me, had a journey on learning about dreams and uh, just what that means, like not only the uh, just having dreams at night and learning about that, but what that, how that pertains to actual our life dreams, and uh, so kind of gonna give a story about how um, a little bit of our story about where we came from to give a background. Uh, some of you may be aware of it, which is cool. Others you may not uh, know uh, kind of how we got to where we are today, and uh, so I was just gonna run down real quick on that. Uh, <coughs> So, myself, um, before we started, did you want to say hello? Hi. <laughs> that was yeah, she can talk. Yes. Um, but I'm going to start with my, a little bit of my story. So, I did grow up in a very Christian home, which is nice. Um, both of my parents grew up in Christian homes, uh, different denominations, but they somehow were able to find unity. Um, and then, uh, so I did that. Um, we went to a lot of different types of churches, so very kind of traditional and all across the board. And then um, I ended up going to a Christian school um, for about half of my schooling. Uh, and then I went to, uh, well, even before that, my parents started a Christian camp. So uh, I was kind of really uh, in, just in Christian world all the time. And then eventually went to um, Liberty University, which is also a Christian, and that's when I ran into this lady. And then you. Um, yeah, so I grew up in a Christian home too, um, which was amazing. I have incredible parents. Um, but kind of same story, um, kind of went to different churches, went to a Christian school. Um, I actually went on a mission trip every year from the time I was 10 years old till I graduated college. Um, so that was definitely something that I look back on and treasure every single mission trip and experience that I got, got to go on. Um, I can't thank my parents enough for letting me do that. Um, and then yeah, went to Liberty and met Mark, so. Yeah, so my senior year of college, I knew of her, but I was not like, uh, you know, we kind of ran in similar circles, that sort of thing. It, excuse me, at the beginning of my senior year, we had a YWAM, I believe it was, the leader of that organization was speaking at Liberty, and they kind of challenged people, like, hey, hey, you know, take two years of your life and give it to missions, and I was one of the few people in that base, a basketball arena at the time, stood up and really felt like that was what I was supposed to do. Well, uh, not long after that, I really got to know uh, Jenny, and we ended up dating before, um, by the second semester, and then I met her dad who ran a missions organization and eventually just started working with him like when I graduated college. So um, so that happened and a couple of years went by and later on, I, don't, I didn't even notice it until like later on in my life that I actually had done two years with a mission organization. So God was kind of uh, fulfilling that vow I guess I took or whatever and I didn't even realize it was going on. And uh, after that I kind of got... Um, into like a regular career stuff, doing, um, working for just um, normal secular com companies, uh, really focusing on web and content and getting into marketing and that's kind of where I'm in. Today I've been working at the Hackworth for almost 10 years and doing marketing and things like that, helping different businesses with that sort of thing. But, uh, so yeah, and, even, and there was one little part in there between, um, when we first moved here, I also worked at a Christian school at Atlantic Shores. Um, for and that's where she graduated high school. So I worked there after we moved here uh, in 2005 for about a year and a half um, doing computer stuff. So, uh, but then after that I went I went with Hackworth. But 
So all up to that time, like dreams specifically for me, um, like I couldn't really tell, I always tell this story about the only dream I can really remember from before like 2008 was when I was a kid and in the dream, I am relieving myself like by this pond and the reason I can probably remember it so well is I woke up and I had peed the bed. So that's the only reason I think <laughs> I remember that and it's kind of traumatic. But so I didn't really honor that that much and I don't know about you like what I know you've had some experiences like growing up and and kind of a little bit maybe more so uh, or tuned to that but what about your experience with dreams and visions and those kind of things? Yeah I don't think um, I'm more I don't think dreams was like a real big thing when I was younger I think it was more um, uh, the supernatural kind of stuff I saw was like on mission trips of course um, I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears um, could hear, um, some crazy cool miracles with um, people having cancer and then we'd go back the next year and they'd be completely healthy, cancer all gone. Um, I mean, you name it, I've seen lots of miracles. I've definitely seen some demonic activity, um, demons being cast out, um, but that was kind of, so definitely supernatural things, but not, not things really related in the sense of like dreams and stuff until you know, recently, and of course, um, being married, because maybe um, for another time I could share this, because I kind of had another dream story that I wanted to share tonight, but um, actually related to when I had cancer. So we'd been married a year, and I found out that I had thyroid cancer, and um, that I had a very significant dream um, when it came to that, but that might be for another night. Another time. Keep them wanting for more. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, um, uh, we moved here in 2005, uh, around 2007 is when I started um, where I work now. And um, but around <clears throat> excuse me, 2008, uh, I was I don't know what I was doing like on YouTube, looking at whatever, just watching things. I ran into uh, this gentleman named John Paul Jackson. Some of you may have heard of him, maybe you haven't. But anyway, I really kind of was like zoned in on what he was teaching about and. And the first thing I ever saw wasn't even necessarily about dreams, but it really kind of locked in and connected with uh, who he was and how um, the messes that he had. And so I began following what he was doing. And, uh, um, and a big part of his ministry was um, dreams and interpreting them biblically and that whole thing. And so I began to really pay attention to what um, he was talking about. And then, uh, and also, um, he had courses online that I began to take and just try to learn as much as I could about it because it really fascinated me and it, I kind of spoke to a part of me that likes to learn about mysteries and just discover new things and all that. And um, so that was um, back in 2008. And um, as I'm going through and um, doing all the courses, I'm learning more and more and I have, and I'm starting to dream. Like, and that was one of the, Here's a tip for you. If you want to, if you're like, I don't dream and it's not for me or whatever, uh, everybody does dream. It is actually scientifically proven that if you don't dream, that means you're probably dead. So, um, but you may not remember them, which is probably where most people are at. And, uh, and the other thing that John Paul Jackson, and he's got Streams Ministries, um, which they're out there if you want to really get deep into learning more about dreams, you can check them out, um, Google them and whatnot. And uh, the thing that he talks about is that whatever you honor, basically, you make room for, right? Like if you are thinking, uh, like, well, I would really like to know or have my dreams or remember them, whatever, it's kind of making it a purpose to, um, hey, Jessica, um, just making it uh, a purpose uh, full thing that, hey, I'm going to try to write this stuff down and just even speaking to your own heart like when you go to sleep like you know I'm gonna try to remember and if you begin to make room for it then things happen and so that was kind of what was happening with me I really began to have more and more dreams or remembered them really and I had a couple that I knew were significant at the time back in you know 2008 2009 2010 I don't you know it's been several years now and so I had begun to journal them and I sent them in to this uh, program that he had called Dreampedia, which he used as a way to teach other people uh, about uh, dreams and how to interpret them and symbolism that's found within dreams. 
And so, you know, I just kind of shot up a couple. And uh, it turned out that he ended up using both of those dreams as teaching materials, which kind of blew my mind because I knew there were a lot of people that were submitting stuff and all that sort of thing. So um, so the fact that he used two of them was, was uh, significant to me. And then um, in... They both were very, like, one of them happened right when it needed to happen so that we could, um, Zach Miller, um, so that we could do something that we needed to do in our home group that we had uh, with the church. Another one really kind of spoke about kind of my overall journey uh, that God was taking me on and continues to till, still inspire me. So that was uh, kind of the next step. And as I was learning more and more about all this stuff, um, and, oh, what, the one part of the dream was, uh, John Paul interpreted it and I didn't really know, like at the time what it meant, I just knew it's significant. And there was a part where he, I was throwing a football with my pastor and the pastor tears the end of it off. And then we were in the foyer while we were doing this and not in sanctuary. And then, uh, John Paul Jackson said that these were symbolic of the fact that a Nerf football is not the real thing, right? And it's like you're tearing that off and, you know, stop playing around and get into the real things of God. And the same thing with the, with the being outside of the sanctuary. You're not in where the real stuff is happening. You're on the foyer. And so that was a really a challenge to kind of go deeper and seek the Lord uh, sort of thing. So that was one of the things that I really learned out of that. And so, excuse me, I do have a cold. Um... Does this process talk about writing down what you want to do 10 minutes before bed and then dream about it and it helps you lead you? Yeah, that's actually part of it, Zach. Um, you can definitely do that. Like, uh, There's such thing as lucid dreaming too, which I haven't really experienced that per se, where you kind of control what's going on in your dreams. But definitely um, dreaming um, can definitely guide you. That's a big part of this, what I think that our dreams are actually speaking or God is speaking through our dreams to direct us and and uh, speak to the things that are in our heart already that maybe will help us or uh, we have a child issue that we're going to take care of. And uh, <clears throat> Josiah is super worried about his glasses case. Um, so, um, John Paul Jackson is a big, um, you know, just mentor to me. And so, uh, at one point, we actually, I'll kind of tell a little bit of this part, it was about uh, what we thought God was speaking uh, certain, about a certain thing. And um, I just want to get Jenny to bring hers. But later, after the fact, we figured out what was really happening. And we didn't really talk to very many people about it. Um, but, you know, it's past and we know what God's doing now, so we're not too worried about it. But, so, you know, what was it? John Paul Jackson got sick really bad. It was cancerous and it was very aggressive and so, and I had kind of felt like um, I, wanted, I always wanted to just meet him, try to talk to him and all that kind of thing, just to have that experience. And then, um, so before, I think even before he got sick, like I had this feeling that maybe we were supposed to move to Dallas, but it wasn't even supposed, like connected to his ministry necessarily. And so, but I didn't say anything about it. Like I started seeing all. Don't this. freak out, local friends. Yeah, We're not moving is, to Dallas. This is like three or four years ago now, and uh, so I just kept it quiet and prayed about it. And I started seeing all this stuff, and I really thought maybe that we were supposed to. And so, um, I like I said, I didn't say anything. And then one morning, I walk upstairs, and this happens. <laughs> you didn't tell me that this is what we're going to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, you got to tell them. So yeah. Um, it was, we had this conference, it's a women's conference that um, happens every like February, March time at our church, it's called Devoted, and I had been attending this, and so this was, yeah, it would have been two and a half years ago. Two and a half, or three maybe. Yeah, because I've been on staff there two years, and it was that, it was it a whole year? Oh no, it was no, three, it was three years, years ago, so it was three and a half years yeah, ago. Yeah, almost four years ago. I um, woke up. So I don't know, I, it could have been like a dream state, but I just remember waking up and hearing a verbal, um, you're, I don't know, I heard, I'm going to say it's God, say, um, you need to move to Dallas. And so, yeah, I just told him, I heard Dallas. Yeah. 
And so I walked in, well, she says this to me, and I hadn't mentioned anything. So then I said to her, uh, well, let me tell you something. And so I just went, Bleh, all the things that I had been feeling. Yeah, like it kind of scared me because she hadn't just said anything to me about Dallas. And he pulls out this, his little trusty iPad that he has here and starts listing all these dates and times and dreams and stuff that he had where he felt he, that we should move to Dallas. So that kind of started this thing. Yeah. So anyway... There was that, and then John Paul gets really sick, and so we're like, okay, is this really happening? And we told a few people that were close to us. Well, we only told family. Like, I didn't tell, like, none of my friends know this. Like, if any of my friends are watching right now, they all can attest that I never said, (laughs) that I never told anybody this. Um, We told my parents. And I think, looking back, that it was, um, it was the Holy Spirit, because, um, I always had this check in my spirit. Like, I always was like, don't tell anybody. We can't tell anybody. And looking back now, that's why. Because, obviously, we weren't supposed to move to Dallas. But I think I, I knew that deep down inside, and I kept not wanting to tell people, but he kept, like, telling more. Like, he told his whole family. Uh, and, a well, a lot. A lot of his siblings and uh, his I, several of his friends. I didn't tell not even one of my friends. He told a lot of his friends that aren't local. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but back to the story was, so we, but for the most part, we were thinking, and like, Jenny kept saying stuff, I think you're supposed to work with John Paul Jackson, yeah. I was like, eh, I don't know about that, and so anyway, but it was tied to all that, to yes. get down to the, so what ended up happening was, he got really sick, they had to do surgery, so he had to take off several months without doing any ministry stuff, and I wanted to go to Dallas, like that, this is what our thought process was, go down there, check it out, and see what God does, right? And I wanted to see, you know, the ministry and, and him if, if possible. So I went. The very first time that he came back after the surgery, which was a few months later, I was there in September, I think it was 2014. And uh, I went and got to sit, sit down on the recording, and and uh, it was a cool experience. I had a lot of, like, God-type things happen there. And, um, you know, a few... Um, like a week or so before, I actually had a dream about the Antichrist, which is kind of strange. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of a different dream because it wasn't as symbolic as like some stuff. Like on most dreams, you're going to notice when you do have them, they are very, lots of symbols in them. And they don't mean like if you, if you have a dream that your spouse dies, you know, don't freak out. It's probably not what, <laughs> he's not literally going to die more than likely. So, um, so anyway, but this one wasn't kind of, it was kind of more just a different, maybe more like a vision, which is visions more often than not is actually like represents a real thing. But so I told that dream in the one part where he had like a question and answer position and he gave his feedback and, it's, and, he, and I told what the guy looked like in the dream and he's like, wow, that sounds exactly like the guy that I saw like 30 years ago. I was like, oh wow, that's crazy. I mean, that was kind of a cool experience and like I said, there was other things that happened on that trip that were God moments for sure, and and uh, for another time, for another time. But anyway, he came back and he was his part of that was his testimony, of just feeling great, and how God just miraculously got we got him recovered from that. He was like just really close to losing his leg, all this stuff. So uh, I get back and um, the next spring, I'm all of a sudden I get this email. It's like oh, we need you to pray because Melanie Parrish, Adriana Walden, what's up? Um, you need to pray for John Paul Jackson because he's taking a turn for the worst and it's not good. And so I'm like, I'm like, wow, I thought he was doing okay. I hadn't heard anything different from that. And so um, I'll have another little dream thing here I want to make sure to talk about. But so that was... Um, forgot to say okay that was February it was in February I think it was it 16th or so is when they the email came out and so I think it was that night that first night I had a dream about Michael Jordan which makes perfect sense so um, and it was this thing where Michael Jordan's like speaking at a graduation commencement and I'm there and he's like I could tell he's like looking right at me and all this and then we talk afterwards and he asked me like what I'm going to college for, which I'm obviously out of college. And I was like, I'm getting a marketing degree or whatever. And, and so he talks to me about this kind of stuff. 
And then, so I had that dream. And the next um, day, or the, or there was like a day or so there. And I, the next night I had another dream. Again, had a Jordan theme. <laughs> it's this time I had Michael Jordan shoes in. Uh, and they were one size bigger than me. And there were... Um, uh, bigger than what I wear, so they were a 12 instead of 11, and uh, and I'm like looking for my school supplies to go back to school, but I couldn't find my stuff, and like all these people are getting on this train to go to school apparently, and like it leaves without me, and so I'm like, all right, uh, and then basically on February 17th, that day, John Paul Jackson passed away, and. Um, and then she she's actually the one that told me about it, so I don't know, you were on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, social media. Right. And so, like, at first I was, like, in shock, and, like, I literally I ended up breaking down. It was, like, really traumatic for me because I learned so much from him. He was a great mentor from afar. And uh, and then Jenny also brought up, was like, did you know it was Michael Jordan's birthday today? And February 17th. And I knew that, like, growing up because I was such a huge Jordan fan. But it just didn't register for, with me like while wow, I was having these dreams. So these dreams the day the day of and the day before uh, featured Jordan were kind of interesting, um, you know, just marker, I guess, what was going on. And just to kind of get back to those dreams, both of those dreams kind of had the same feel of it. You might have picked up a little bit about education and, you know, finishing commencement and getting bigger shoes and all that. So basically it was both speaking to the fact that, like, part of my training was over. You know, here was a guy that I learned so much about dreams from, uh, passing away, and uh, and not that I could no longer learn anything, but that was the symbolism within those dreams was that, you know, I'm stepping into something bigger than what I was before because those bigger shoes to fill, right? Uh, and the training and not going back to school or missing the train, another play on words. So that's another thing to look out for dreams is the play on words that happens I will use puns and all sorts of different things to, you know, speak to you uh, in your dream. The other thing to think about is, um, you know, for me too, that's very personal because I was a big Jordan fan, and you know, I looked up to him uh, as growing up, and here was another person that I looked up to as an adult uh, that uh, had passed away, and so that all happened, and since then, just had I'd have dreams pretty much all the time. They'll always, you know, remember exactly what they are, but I remember the one that I know God wants me to remember. And so one of the things that last year, I really um, was challenged by another gentleman uh, to do, Brandon Dalton, Cindy Patek, what's up? Um, was to really write, in the, and I knew it had to do with dreams, and so I sat down and just like for almost like a month and a half or somewhere around there. Every day I wrote things on these dreams and how our night dreams speak to our life dreams. That was kind of the whole goal of it. And you may have seen here on Facebook, I've been posting recently, a couple, like once a week, the last couple weeks, uh, some of those posts, and they're all basically written last year. And I felt like that was a kind of step towards what more of my life dreams is. And that's, a, you know, it's kind of like, I've always, that was one of the dreams I mentioned early on that, that John Paul Jackson used on his program about uh, it actually spoke about two dreams and that God wanted me to pray about them and <clears throat> and that for me has been the prophetic or hearing the voice of God and the business world and having those two things marry together to really see God do incredible things with people's businesses and um, and so as I've kind of believed that and you know Jenny and I've talked about this for several years and she knows about it but um, I just didn't like that was a good goal but like how do you get there right and so that's just kind of one of the first steps was the writing and just recently I was like I wrote all that but I didn't release it and so that's what I felt like at least the first step was to release these uh, writings that I've done and hopefully encourage people and just drop some a little bit of knowledge that I have about dreams and uh, and then while I'm doing that how this really came about was me working out um, watching a YouTube video and I was like this is obviously not YouTube but uh, we can put it on there um, but I was like maybe I should do something you know I never thought about it before so that felt like the next step just to kind of what's up Jeanette uh, just to um, 
you know, have a resource for people and just take that as a kind of thing to do uh, for the going towards that ultimate goal of uh, using this type of avenue, God speaking through dreams and other, th other ways as well to help not only people, but businesses and business owners and things like that. So I don't know if you had a couple things. Like if you guys, uh, I know we have uh, multitudes watching us <laughs> and uh, you know, we're glad you're all here. Uh, but if you guys ever, like we'll probably try to do this. I don't know how often, but we're going to do different types of things. But you know, if you ever have a dream that you wanted to share that maybe you didn't, weren't real sure what it was about, um, feel free to post it. Definitely. I'd love to try to, um, you know, figure the mystery out. And, you know, the thing about dream interpretation is that you don't necessarily have to know all the things about it. God can definitely speak to you anytime and let you know what it's all about. Um, but there are some principles that's good to know about. And it's just like anything else, any other discipline, you know, the more you do it, the better you can get at it. So I'm not perfect at it for sure, but um, better than I used to be. So if you ever have anything, feel free to, I mean, you can share that anytime. It doesn't have to be while we're on the old streaming live show, the Mark and Jenny Dream Team show. So I know you had a little dream that um, recently, I had one too that I thought I would just share later too, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about that one. All right, so um, the dream that I had recently, I'll kind of give you the back story, but um, Elena Kay has been um, going to our um, church's youth group now for a year um, because as a rising middle schooler um, last year going into sixth grade um, last summer she got to start going to rural youth and absolutely loves it every Wednesday um, is not even a problem she wants to go she's been going wanting to go earlier and earlier and stay later and later um, so we just know that this is like a huge thing for our daughter's lives we're just so excited to see her like planted being an awesome connect group making friends um, finding her best friend um, in it and stuff like this. So all of a sudden one day though, she is kind of all, from the time she came home from school, was acting really like just different, like off. Um, and I didn't know what it was. And then um, she kind of was moping around. She wanted to ride her bike, but we were trying to get her <laughs> to ride it without training wheels. She's 12 years old. <laughs> and so um, she was like, no, I don't want to learn. And so we thought maybe she was just upset about that. Um, cause she kind of would, was giving an attitude about it and, you know, Mark was kind of like trying to encourage her to learn without the training wheels. So they all went outside to ride bikes and she stayed in the house and, um, she's kind of giving me attitude, which is, you know, I don't know, it's kind of normal cause she's in middle school, but at the same time, I'm not used to it. So, um, all of a sudden I was like, okay, you're getting ready. I'm going to take you to youth. Are you ready to go? And she was like, I don't want to go. I'm not going to youth. And I was like, it surprised me because she never, ever had done that up to this point. Um, but it was kind of good because we were able to have that discussion of, hey, um, you know, going to church is not an option. It's kind of like in our household, you go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and you're going to go to youth. And it's not going to be a I don't feel like it moment you're going to go. Um, the only time we don't go is if we're sick. And even then we watch online. Um, so that's kind of something that we've laid out um, this whole time we've been married and with our kids from the whole time, from the beginning since they've been babies. So church is not an option. We go to church. Um, so had that conversation with her and, you know, she didn't argue. Um, we got in the car and we went to youth. I picked her up after youth and I was like, how was youth? Was it good? And she's like, yeah, youth was great. And so I was like, okay, maybe she's doing better. Um, so she goes to bed, we go to bed. And that night I had a dream and my dream was, um, that she had gone over to my parents' house to sleep over, which is something that happens all the time. My parents are always taking the kids um, over for dates and sleepover. And um, my parents ended up, like I was like picking her up after the sleepover. And my parents were like, oh, we have to tell you that Lenny Kay got bit on the arm by a snake. But they said it so like casually, like, oh, she got bit in the arm by a snake. It's, she'll be fine. And I start freaking out. And this is all in the dream. And I'm like, she got bit in the arm by a snake? And I was like, we gotta take her to the hospital. We gotta take her now. And I was like, the poison is gonna start leaking into her body. And um, she could die. Like, this is all my thoughts. And I'm like, kind of tell, like freaking out, but telling my parents this. And my parents are like, no, she's fine. Like, we bandaged it up. Like, she's gonna be fine. Just let her be. And so I woke up and that was the extent of the dream. But I instantly, like sometimes in dreams, you like have to figure out what was that dream 
what does that mean? And I literally like instantly knew, um, you know, what, well, I kind of knew what the, the uh, dream meant because, um, well, I ended up telling him the dream, but did I find out about her friend? I don't know. After? I, I know. So, tell him the dream, and then I go downstairs. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Backing hi. up to, well, it's immediately when she tells me about Snake, I know that's a symbol of, of, lies. of lies. And so, there's some things that, you know, for the most part, they're probably going to mean that, especially in this context where there's... You know, it's not good, you know, to her as a dreamer. She's like, that's not good, you know. She's trying to tell her parents that, and they don't seem to care. But the it's got play on words, too, because a snake is a has a long tail, right? And it's not long tail like T-A-I-L. It's T-A-L-E, so it's a lie. Yeah. So I go downstairs, and I'm getting the kids ready for school. The littles get on the bus at 8.10, and then I have... Um, till 8.35 before I have to get Elena Kay on the bus. So it's kind of nice time because the littles aren't gone and I'm doing our last minute, um, you know, preps for Elena Kay. So usually that time I'm doing her hair and, you know, we're chatting. Sometimes we'll get on Snapchat and like do stuff like that. But um, that morning she was on her iPad and um, we just recently, like it hasn't even been a year where we let her have this app where she can text her friends on her iPad because she doesn't have a phone yet. So she was texting her friends and one of the rules that we have for um, her texting her friends is that she can't delete anything ever and we have to be able to read it at any time. We can open it up and we can read her texts. So um, she was texting and so I said, hey, and I just ended up sitting by her and said, hey, can I read what you're texting? And she was like, yeah. And so I'm reading it, and her friend had texted her and said something about, um, I don't want, it was a group, I think it was a group text, but it might not have been, but she was saying, I don't want to do that thing that the girls want to do, that wedding between me and Iris. And I knew the girl, well, I guess I don't have to say names, but I knew it was another girl. And so I was like, what is she talking about, wedding? And I knew it was two girls. And Lenny Kay says, what? I'm it. I love you. <laughs> it is. So, and it's also when I had like a freak out moment, but so Elena Kay's like, yeah, so I have these two friends. Okay. She goes, she doesn't go to Christian school. She goes to public school and she goes, I have these two friends that like each other and they're girls. And I was like, oh, you do? And I was like, oh Lord, how do I handle this? I'm like, this is my baby. This is like a pretty big experience that we're having to deal with. So I'm like freaking out on the inside and I'm just like, but I don't understand what are you talking about? And she's like, well, they kind of like each other. And I'm like, like each other, like, like lesbians. And she was like, yeah. And I was just like, oh no. So then I was like, um, I was like, well, you know, you know, just our stance and like, you know, and she was like, yes, but I just want to love them. And I just feel like, so we just had this like good conversation, but at the same time, it was like I could sense that she had this like struggle and then instantly I was like this is why she had an attitude yesterday just like everything came to play this is why all of a sudden out of the blue she didn't want to go to youth and I could tell that she was struggling with this too and so it was so funny because I was just like we had this literally five minutes because I remember looking at my clock and thinking this is 8 30 she has to be on the bus at 8 35 so in that short time I'm like trying to speak truth to her talking about how we love others but that there's this element of truth in love and how we can speak love but have the truths that God has given us and so I'm like dying on the inside and then she gets on the bus she's like I know mom but she's kind of like ah, like you know attitude and these are my friends and like and I'm just like dying so I'm like okay are we having to deal with this now and so she gets on the bus and goes and I call Mark at this point I have like trying to contain myself talking to my daughter so I'm like bawling my eyes out talking to him just like crying 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 but then I remembered the dream and I said that I know exactly what the dream means and so to me um, the reason why my parents were symbolic of parents us being parents and all of a sudden I said mark in the dream my parents were so like it's fine she got bit by a snake <coughs> it's okay nothing's gonna happen she doesn't need to go to the doctor and so I was like that is symbolic of us we need to react to this situation to this you know a snake bite is poisonous and we need to um, address this now we need to talk about it 
now. We need to pray about it. We need to cover it with prayers, you know, and um, and we can't not do anything about it. And so, um, after talking to him, because I'm like the one that can be like, ah, and he is like the calming, <laughs> like, you know, he was like, it's good. We're just going to keep loving her. And like, she's in our home. We've already been teaching her, you know, what we've been teaching her. So she's going to be fine. And I'm going to spend ta more time with her and, you know, stuff like that. So I get to work and I immediately go talk to one of my coworkers who's amazing and um, just kind of shared everything with her. And she was like immediately like, let's just pray for her right now and um, just cover her in prayer. Um, and then, you know, the cool part about it is um, since then, it's kind of actually strange at the same time I know it's God. Um, I just prayed with Elena Kay like crazy and she had, she came home that night and she was just like, um, we've never talked about it again. And basically this wedding uh, was supposed to be like one of their, uh, one of the girls in another girl in the group was trying to push this wedding on these two other girls that said they liked each other. But the one girl felt uncomfortable and was like, I don't want to do this. And so she said that once basically Elena Kay told her in text like you don't have to do this if you don't feel comfortable like it's it's fine and so she said since then they've never even addressed it they've never even talked about it completely like dropped off the face of the planet but I just know that it was because we covered it with prayer and you know it's there especially with kids um, and we have you know multiple kids there's just going to be numerous issues that you're going to face whether it's social issues and there's so much stuff political um, racial that you're going to be talking to your kids about and um, and I just think that um, that God knows our hearts and he especially like for moms he knows how much we like care about our children and so he is going to constantly be speaking to us and he's going to be giving us dreams he's going to be giving us wisdom through scripture and he's going to help us figure out how to raise our kids in the best way and so that was kind of my dream story. Yeah, and that type of dream is what you would categorize as a warning dream, um, you know, because it obviously was kind of upsetting as far as the content of it, but it's God letting you see maybe what the enemy would like to do is like infect Elena Kay with some lie that would, you know, um, not be good for her, obviously. So, um, yeah, that's um, a warning dream. And there's basically 20 different uh, categories. I think we'll talk about that maybe some other time. But um, I was just going to give a short little one. I didn't even write it down because I, it was kind of a, a different dream that I had this week. But it was one of those that if you just looked at it in the face value, you'd be probably have no idea what was going on. To um, But I believe God just kind of spoke to my heart about it. Like what it really, it was kind of associative more than anything but <clears throat> um, so I had a dream where Philip Seymour Hoffman was yelling at me <laughs> so I'm sure everybody already knows what that means <laughs> so uh, um, but I was like doing some things wrong or whatever in the dream and he was like you know tearing me down there were some other people around whatever and the one of the main things about the dream is like how I felt in it like I just felt like not good you know somebody's um, you know, just yelling at you. I don't know if anybody really enjoyed being yelled at. Um, but, <clears throat> so when I, you know, I woke up and I was kind of remember that. And that's really what stuck out is the feeling of, you know, someone yelling at you. And that really what I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart then was like how we interact with our children. And I don't know about you, but I have ra ra raised my voice before <laughs> with the kids. And I was just kind of looking at it from the perspective of what it felt like. Uh, for me to get yelled at even in this dream and so I really even though I've probably done better in recent years but uh, or times I don't know how many years I've been good at it but uh, just really being mindful of communicating with you know these little people uh, in a way you know they're gonna do stuff that's maybe not right and all that but you know as adults you know uh, we shouldn't be just yelling at someone if they do something wrong or whatever, right? We should be able to communicate. And I think we should do the same thing. At least I know that was kind of what was being uh, uh, spoken to in my heart. And so that was really what I have got out of that dream. And it didn't necessarily, if you broke it down like maybe you would traditionally, like with symbolism, you wouldn't necessarily get there with that. Uh, but that's kind of one of those things where you feel like God just kind of 
puts a couple things together and you're like, okay, I can just kind of see that. And uh, the one thing though, I, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, like what's going on with that? So sometimes what people's names mean can be a clue into what God's speaking about. And so I kind of looked that up and I think there is some relevance there. And I didn't know this, maybe you guys do, but Philip means lover of horses. And uh, then his last name, Hoffman, uh, means steward. Um, and that's where this, like the lover of horses is actually where I think some of the civil one comes in because in dreams, a horse uh, represents power. Uh, so there's, I think it's this idea of stewarding uh, and how powerful love is. And then uh, see more was kind of like a play on words too, like you see more. So just the vision that, or be able to see more what's going on and um, just to steward the love that we have. It's a powerful thing that we have with our kids and you know with other people in general. When you know you can steward that well, it's very powerful, and you know we we'll see more fruit from it. So that's kind of my on the fly um, interpretation of all that. So so that pretty much wraps it up for. No, oh, she's gonna say something. So I'm not <laughs> I wanted to because I'm like okay. people might go back and watch this later oh, now too. Lots yes, of lots will. of people will. We're sure of it. <laughs> but to conclude the Dallas thing, since we oh, brought yes. it up unexpectedly, I didn't know he was gonna bring up Dallas. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, the coolest oh, I part about why, it. What, what I thought it was. What yeah. It was. Well, and the coolest thing about it is like in the end when we looked back, um, clearly God was telling us Dallas, but it wasn't. He wasn't telling us to move there. He wanted that connection that he got with um, John Paul Jackson to happen, this um, dreams thing to be birthed in him. I think it's definitely going to be something that God uses in Mark's future, um, and he has already used him a lot in it. Um, but we, he had been talking to one of our pastors at church and actually met with him several times telling him that we wanted to move to Dallas because this is when we didn't realize that God, that's not what God was saying. We were taking it literal. Um, and this pastor clearly thought we weren't supposed to. And he, you know, would always listen to Mark and encourage him. But you could tell he was steering him in the direction of you guys aren't supposed to move. And so um, I think the part that I wanted to address about it is how if you feel like God is speaking something to you, you need to go to leadership. You need to be able to go to someone that you care about, whether it's like a connect group leader or a pastor or um, someone that you, you know, really look to when you're making like a life decision like that. So... We ended up actually meeting with the um, lead uh, pastor of our church, the pastor's wife, and um, literally on that day, I left knowing that we weren't supposed to move. And then within two weeks, I think, I got offered a job. Um, and I'm, you know, we know that this is exactly where I got. Yeah. Wanted. So basically, I was supposed to go to Dallas, but it was a temporary yeah. trip, small, you know, um, but it was very significant for my life. Yeah, and so, you know, just, you know, when God <laughs> speaks, um, you know, it's not always, you know, Paul talks about we see through a uh, glass darkly or, you know, you, so you don't get necessarily the perfected, you know, meaning of everything when God does speak with us through a dream or any other way. And obviously the Bible is, I didn't mention it, but uh, Bible's super important. Bible talks about dreams a lot and that's where you base the symbolism and all that for the most part. Uh, a lot of the like reoccurring and different things, you know. Uh, if you go back to the dream of the, of the, with the snake, you know, um, you look at obviously too in the Bible, you know, that the devil came to Eve as a, as a serpent, and obviously he was speaking lies. So there's the foundation is all through the Bible, and uh, even with that, right, you have to have the Holy Spirit um, to enlighten uh, your reading of that to really make a difference in each of our lives. Uh, so. That's always a, a key, not to just like, you know, always take things at their face value and just continue to seek the Lord and, and seek His wisdom, seek the counsel of others that are uh, wise as well. And um, I think it would be all right in the end. And um, But uh, like I mentioned someone recently, uh, that God's, you know, even if you're not sure what's happening all around you and whatnot, but God is leading us and He is directing our paths, um, even if it seems like we don't know what's happening so yeah um rob <clears throat> the uh i don't think i ran into too many dallas cowboy fans i'm sure they were all fans but they kept it themselves so i was i felt safe enough while i was there <laughs> so 
So yeah, if you guys ever have any uh, questions or dreams or anything, uh, oh, Jeanette, you asked about the uh, type of dream, like that Hoffman dream. So, so I don't know if it was necessarily a warning, but um, definitely instructional, I think, just you know, for me personally. Uh, but I probably have to look through the different types to make sure, but maybe a little, I mean, the other one definitely was warning, but. The snake yeah. one was warning, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, when we do this again, I think we'll, we'll let people know, but I think like we'll maybe do like a day where we're, we'll collect people's dreams that they want us to interpret or yeah. Mark to interpret. And then, um, yeah, we'll let you know. I think this will be fun. At first I was like, why do you want me to be on here? <laughs> Look at how beautiful this is. Look how fun. This is fun. <laughs> So, all right. I'll so, do it again. Do it again. So thanks for everybody stopping by, all four of you. <laughs> and we'll catch you on the flip side.